Good morning, everyone. I'm Riley King, and welcome to the Riley King Newscast, right here on the Riley King Network. Let's begin. First step, impact of federal government shutdown felt locally in New Hampshire. Let's take a listen to the video from WMUR News 9. Governor Sununu says the state government is prepared for a shutdown, but the focus right now is on the National Guard. They have to uh, be ready, they have to have the resources available. Lieutenant Colonel Greg Heilshorn telling News 9 the initial impact of the shutdown has been the cancellation of a drill. It was scheduled for this weekend involving about 680 guardsmen, but it does not stop there for about 400 other people in the National Guard. Uh, those that are categorized as um, federal civilian employees um, will be uh, will be notified, officially notified of the shutdown and then within about three hours uh, will be furloughed. That will happen Monday. Heilshorn emphasizing that the National Guard is still very much operational. Meantime, the governor is calling out Democratic leadership. Uh, I think a lot of us were holding out hope that the Democrats would uh, come together and understand that sh shutting down the government is never productive for anything. It's never in any constituent's interest to cast that de deciding vote to shut down uh, the government. Senator Jean Shaheen firing back, saying while the shutdown is not good for anyone, she hopes agreements can be reached that involve the Children's Health Insurance Program and DACA. We have got to stop operating the federal government a month at a time. We need a long-term budget agreement. We have a lot of work to do, and it would be helpful if everybody could work in a positive way instead of the name calling that's been going on. Now, Shaheen's office telling us that Senator Collins of Maine has reconvened the Common Sense Caucus, a group working on a bipartisan agreement to fund the government. Senators Shaheen and Hassan were told are participating in those talks as part of that group. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Thousands take part in Boston Cambridge Women's March. Let's take a listen to the video from WCVB Boston. Hats are back. So are many of the signs and slogans criticizing President Trump. But what he doesn't know, when he strikes a woman, he strikes a rock. But the crowd that gathered in Cambridge was only a fraction of the estimated 175,000 people who marched one year ago on Boston Common. Last year was once in a lifetime. We'll never have that again. But this year is wonderful too. Smaller, more concentrated. Senator Elizabeth Warren and other Massachusetts congressional leaders were no-shows because of the federal government shutdown. So Massachusetts Attorney General Maura Healey was the headline speaker. I told Donald Trump, we'll see you in court. Wearing a t-shirt that read the future is female, Healy called for more women to seek out positions of power. I think that that's one thing we that we've learned over the last year. Ever. Um, we need more women in office, we need more women running businesses, we need more women in the boardroom. Organizers set up a voter registration table, but some are bothered by the fact that so far in this year's race for Massachusetts governor, none of the declared candidates is a woman. I wish a woman would run against Charlie Baker um, because some of his policies are not that great um, and they don't really address women. We will. Cambridge police say there was also a counter-protest involving about 20 people. Officers managed to keep the two groups apart, and there were no arrests. Live in Cambridge, David Binnick, WCVB News Center 5. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Annual Lobster Dip Benefits Special Olympics.
Let's take a listen to the video from WMTW News 8 in Maine. Hey, bud, Austin. Yeah, break the fine white car next. Tune up with an oil change. Bring it into Farmer Spring. Air condition. We can do that. Tire rotation. We do that. Exhaust. Absolutely. Give us a call or visit our website. We do it all. <laughs> Water temperatures right under 40 degrees this morning, just in time for the 30th annual Lobster Dip in Old Orchard Beach. The event held at the Brunswick Hotel Beachfront is a fundraiser for more than 4,300 Mainers with developmental disabilities who compete in Maine's Special Olympic Games. We're Mainers. We're awesome. We love the extreme weather. We love these extreme adventures. And um, we love the challenge of it. So I think right off the bat, that's what a brings a lot of people. But definitely the cause. Special Olympics is really important to so many people. The dip traditionally takes place on New Year's Day, but was postponed twice this year by the Arctic blasts and ice storm concerns. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Poll aimed record low one year approval half question Trump's mental state ability. A year in the presidential spotlight hasn't been kind to President Trump. His approval rating is the lowest in modern polling for a president at this point with deep defects on policy and personal matters alike. Strictly, the public divides evenly on whether or not he's mentally stable. And here is a look at the ABC News poll. As you can see. So the green is and the black is not. Here it is 48% and then 47% and then over here 21% and then 73%. And that does it for the Riley King newscast right here on the Riley King Network. I hope you all have a great rest of your Sunday, and I'll see you back here later on today for another newscast. Goodbye, everyone.